Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your hosts, Matt, Jeff, and Steve. G'day, mate. G'day. Hey, guys. Mate, uh, today we're talking about the mouth and oral hygiene. And it's funny because, you know, a lot of people don't realize, and just talking with you guys quickly before we started the podcast, just to how important the mouth is mm. to your overall health. Now, we mm. have mentioned before in a couple of other podcasts about uh, certain aspects of but it's time to recap. There's been a lot more updated information come mm. out, Steve yeah. uh, and Matt. So where do you guys want to start? Well, let me give a quick oh. summary of why yeah. it's important, um, just the relevance. Um, what a lot of people don't realise is that the mouth itself, We, of course it's the portal to your digestive tract. I mean, it's hard to, that's the direction. How did direction. you describe it before, Matt? It was the... Well, I explained that the eyes are the window to the soul yes. and that the mouth is the portal to your poo. But um, the, big, the big thing is... Um, you got to understand the importance of the mouth and what it does is it as we're eating foods it's to telling our the rest of our digestive tract what to expect so it's measuring carbs it's measuring acid it's measuring um, um, acid base balance it's also measuring the protein levels and mm. getting an understanding of what's coming through to send signals to the rest of the body to prepare for the digestion but also even like we've talked about um, the sweet taste buds that we find on mm. the tongue exactly the same receptors are found in the fat cells inside our body. So when we get signals from our mouth to say that this is coming through, the body starts preparing for those foods. So the mouth is very important, again, to start the digestive process, to break it all down and that sort of thing. So we, a lot of us just look at the mouth as in regards to just chewing things up to get mm. to the stomach, but there's a lot of signals in that are coming from the mouth to the body to tell about priorities. So if you consider that, the digestive tract is our first line defense. Well, mm. the, the mouth is the gatekeeper to the digestive tract. So it's very important to look after the mouth because any signals coming from the immune system in the mouth, any inflammatory mediators, any of those um, lipopolysaccharides, those bacterial cell fragments and different fragments of bugs that sh show signs of rotten food or um, that you may be eating uh, or uh, uh, toxic foods or you might have um, eaten a, um, you know, maybe get food poisoning or eaten a poison or a venom, they all initiate stress reactions and survival mechanisms. So basically the mouth itself, if your mouth is weak, if your mucosa has been degraded and broken down, if the first line defense in regards to your microbiome that lives in the bio barrier, if they are compromised, then you will be getting constant sources of inflammation through your body, constant sources of stress. Now that inflammation and that stress, regardless of the cause of inflammation and stress, contributes to cardiovascular disease, contributes to cancer, to contributes to our catabolic degradation rather than our anabolic recovery and repair. Now, if we consider the mouth, ideally would be breaking down foods to, to provide nutrients for our body to use that as building blocks and energy and stuff like that. Instead, the mouth is then sending signals to the body saying, no, this is stress. Let's flush it away. Let's get rid of it. It's toxic. It's poisonous. So very simple process of having a leaky gut wall in your mouth <laughs> could actually change your whole body priorities from anabolic and healthy into catabolic and short-term survival. And because it is constant, it's not going to sleep when you go to bed and all that sort of stuff. That's when all this stuff happens and throws up. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can has a, have a source of inflammation um, and a source of stress that's coming from your mouth that's putting your body into a state of disease. Mm. So it's extremely important. And funny thing is, is it's something that as a naturopath, it wasn't something I, I, I did a lot with unless someone actually complained it as a priority. And, and yeah, it's funny, it's, a, it's something I, I think it's a big priority um, and not many people realize the importance of it. But there's also a couple of very simple patterns if we understand microbiome acid and base balance in the mouth sugars and that sort of stuff if we understand how these things influence our oral health and if we can give some people some um signs and symptoms that they can um, assess their own teeth and then know if they're on the right track or the wrong track and then we'll give you some tools and that sort of stuff that you can use to improve your oral health yes absolutely <laughs> so that's a summary of what it, we're doing today yeah absolutely and, and it's critical to identify what causes dental caries how to prevent them uh, what to do if you get one what hmm. fillings can we use and and all these sort of other things and what causes them the, the bugs that cause them you know like like strep mutans that's a yep. classic one and of course uh, oh, we're getting hate mail of this one but lactobacillus acidophilus causes dental caries yep. because it's a lactic, it's a lactic so acid. So from yogurt, no? Yeah. 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 So in terms of, 
you know, obviously the different diseases, Steve and Matt, do you know, obviously cavities, would that be the number one dental issue would be cavities? Like, yeah, you know, gingivitis. Gingivitis. Gingivitis is inflammation of the gums yep. and also yeah. the buildup of plaque, which yep. is a harbour town. It's full of glucans, which mm. basically harbours bacteria to allow the teeth to rot. It's funny. Mm. When I used to drink a lot of milk protein shakes when I was younger, I used to have them on milk and my dentist said, man, the amount of plaque that you're building mm. up is absolutely huge. Oh, milk. So yeah. I'd back, back off the milk because he actually, I don't know who this, I can't even remember who he was, but he said, maybe you should back off on your milk because yeah. you're producing so much plaque. So when you with the teeth themselves, if you have a look at the architecture of a tooth, yeah, so, so a lot of people think they're like a, a calcium plug that's just sitting there to mash there stuff go. up. It's got the root, and uh, there you go. You want to talk about the tooth? Well, you better do it now. What's that? Tell me how your tooth works. Well, it that's the enamel, like the, ha- the hard bit, the calcium acids. phosphate bit. Yep. And then you got the dentine underneath it, which is a porous, fairly hard. Yeah. And then you got the root stuff in the middle that's. You know that it supplies all the blood and nerves and that sort of thing. There's the three basic parts of a tooth, but you want to. So talk the inside's alive. It's got the blood supply. It's got a lot yes. of organic material. Like twenty percent of the tooth itself, inside, is organic material, which is mainly collagen. Yes. Okay. So people don't realise that collagen is the one. So yeah, sometimes you can have a tooth that you bump it and it gets loose and then it tightens up again. It's actually the collagen anchoring it back into the jawbone mm. that will keep that tooth in place. So, so this collagen. Is scurvy is obviously well, exactly. the teeth in that. Exactly. So this is why, no, very good point, this is why scurvy causes disease. Okay, because what scurvy is, is not just an immune deficiency because of a lack of vitamin C. It's a, initially, it's a collagen deficiency, which means they have a totally leaky membrane through the gut. They don't have the ability to anchor their teeth in properly. They don't have the ability to build collagen into the root structure of the teeth to hold it in. Plus, the gums deteriorate. They, they fall apart, so you, which leaves gaps between the gum and the teeth to allow infection in, and that infection's a direct portal through to the body. Mm. Um, we mentioned lactobacillus before. Yes. You know, people with HIV and that sort of stuff have got to be very careful supplementing probiotics because the bugs can get straight through the oral cavity and create mm. a systemic Lots infection because right. they've got no immune system to keep it out of the way. Mm. So... What you'll find with this collagen is it helps to build it. But what they've recently discovered, you know, the enamel of the teeth, the hard shell on the outside, it's supposed to be just this dentin, this calcium yeah, stuff. Phosphate, it's just this yeah. calcium. Phos- it's a hard shell. Um, they believe there was never collagen aspect to that. They've recently discovered that it's full of collagen. There's mm. a lots of collagen mm. in it. And they use hydroxyproline mm. as the marker to assess the collagen levels in the teeth, which is also why your shaker was a good representation of teeth. Because have you got the essential aminos I in have. that? Because we made the vegan aminos and we actually made hydroxyproline for vegans because vegans have a major deficiency of hydroxyproline. Back to your scurvy story, it all starts to make sense because proline, hydroxyproline is not found in the vegan diet, mm. okay? They have to get proline and vitamin C, and the vitamin C to proline makes hydroxyproline. Hydroxyproline then coats the teeth. Hydroxyproline's the main, or well, 30% of the collagen molecule that um, allev- allows it to have elasticity that anchors the tooth into the jaw as well. Mm. So vegans and people that have gone onto a vegan diet have significantly Uh, bad teeth okay so the teeth go really bad and someone that was on an omnivore diet switches to a vegan diet can get um, very fast deterioration of the teeth Mm. the main reason why is because the vegan mouth because of the fruits Mm. and all those sort of different vegetables very high in acid and also because of the higher predominance of firmicutes in particular strep lactobacillus Mm. that thrive on those sugars the fruit sugars and everything and make a lot of acid that degrades the teeth Mm. Without the hydroxyproline from the collagen, they can't protect the teeth from the acid. Mm, wow. So what they're finding it's is vegan. Whammy. Exactly. So vegan teeth are more predisposed to demineralization because of the predisposition to an acid mouth uh, on average across. And I'll, we'll get the references. Yeah, we'll very important. Reference, yeah. References for all these sort of things. And people can access the full text paper and read the whole thing. Like I've got a review here on fluoride that I'll probably list one sentence from, but it's a 51-page document that I'm not going to read through. Mm. So and people can reference You that. paid for that document. Oh, yeah, so I paid not... 50 bucks American too, you know. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so these things aren't, you know, we can, and through copyright I can't just read through it. Um, you'll have to buy it yourself to read it. You, you can but, download an abstract. Now, an abstract mm. is just a summary of the paper and yeah. you can usually get that for free on public. Yeah. And you've so got to these... be dangerous as well too with those abstracts, just quickly. Yeah, well they can. Oh, yeah. They That's why we get the And it's their interpretation as well too. Of course. Well, the amount of times when Matt's come back to me and he said, look, the astronaut says that this is interesting. He's read through it and he goes, oh, actually, they've kind of missed the point a little bit. Yeah, they have. Yeah. 
Yeah, when you read the full paper, because they can use the abstract like a brochure. Yes. So, you know, this is this paper here, the oral implications of the vegan diet, observational studies. Um, and so basically you can get that paper, it talks about it all, and it talks about the pH changing and averaging between four and six, which is extremely acidic, acidic yeah. in the mouth. But those acids are made up as such things as lactic acid. If you get a big mm. buildup of lactobacillus in your mouth and you're eating a lot of, um, well, vegans won't be eating the dairy, but if they get a lot of lactobacillus, it actually creates lactic acid, which degrades the teeth and that sort it's of quite, stuff. quite bad. So if you, like, for example, you're telling that story before about when you had a lot of milk products. Mm. So if you had a lot of lactobacillus in your mouth, you have a lot of milk products that have some lactose and everything in it. They make lactic acid. They start degrading your teeth. The body responds with this plaque layer. Yeah, right. and everything like that so interesting hey it is, uh, it's starting to really be cool so if you if you start to look at these patterns we talk about firmicutes mm -hmm. when we talk about gut health and don't forget it's just an extension of that and yeah, anything so. that's living in your lower bowels come usually come this way i'm hoping yeah. yeah most of the time it comes through this way on your food and on your hands and all yeah. that sort of stuff so your mouth is going to get a nice dose of that um when the mouth fills up with firmicutes mainly strep Lactobacillus are the worst ones. Yeah, so the two worst ones, yeah. Um, but dental they diet. make you crave sugar as well. So they make you yeah, crave right. their food. So they'll make you crave that sweetness after a meal or they'll make you crave those things. And then what happens is you eat them, they convert the sugars into acid. That acid degrades the teeth. If you've got a weak enamel with inadequate collagen and inadequate toughness to that, then you're actually predisposed to um, demineralization of your teeth. So it's terrible. And, and um, you know, you, you mentioned collagen and you mentioned that the vegan diet, that's really interesting because the vegan diet has a double aim, but they also have more starches. And you've yeah. got, in your mouth, you release an enzyme called amylase, and yeah. amylase breaks down starches into sugars. So you might be eating, quote, and I'll use the word complex carbohydrates, I hate that So non-sweet carbs. So bread, <laughs> bread or something. Yeah. And it breaks down, yeah, wheat bix, and it breaks down the sugar in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, and right. So you're actually, as far as your teeth are concerned, getting exposed to sugar. Right. Yep. There's yep. no difference. So, so you could be eating a, quote, healthy... And then the sugar converts to acid. Yep. And sugar also... Sugar can kind of like burn things too, eh? Like that... That glycation process, just having extra sugar in your mouth with that exposure to that oxygen, because it's not like we're talking about aerobic environment here, not like in the lower deep dark corners of the bowel mm. where there's no oxygen. Anaerobic, yeah. So we get sugars and oxygen and they glycate and they it actually burns. When you oxidize sugar, you'll burn stuff. Yeah, right. So it actually just cooks these things away as well. So you can imagine that how powerful it's very it bad. I mean, the dental carry history was first discovered about 10,000 years ago in fossil record where they first discovered carries and it. it coincided with the grains being, you know, farmed. Yeah. But but the first literature of it was in um, eight, uh, 1634 where yeah. they first uh, described dental carries. And dental carries is a generic term just as being a hole. Yeah, they right. carry a hole. So yeah. they didn't know what it was. Yeah. They just found these holes in these people's teeth. Yeah, right. And they went, well, what's the cause? Now, of course, they didn't know. 1944, they started to just look, look at bacteria and say, yeah. oh, yeah, it's these things that are driving it. So it's very interesting, the history of it. Yeah, and remember they used so to they have... So they really only found it in the 1940s, what was... Yeah, and wow. even even very recently with, with the sRNA-16 method of testing DNA of bacteria, they're finally, you know, it, it's the it's the mutant. Because before mutant. that, it was just like you go to a shopping centre and they put some red shit in your mouth and if your teeth go red, you're covered in bugs, you need yeah. more toothpaste. And of Remember course, those the, ads? The, Remember Ms. those ads? Mrs. Marsh? Yeah, you yeah. know, oh, tough teeth. Mr. Marshall, we're going to get straight in. We were talking about it before. Like, funny, we all go, that, yeah, that tough teeth, see this fluoride get in. But we didn't this really chalk. acknowledge the fact that she just grabbed the chalk and snapped it. That was their disclaimer to say, by the way, this fluoride might get into your teeth, but it does make them extremely brittle, demineralized, and very easy to break if I do that. <laughs> well, that, the <laughs> funny. A very sneaky disclaimer put in there, Miss Marsh. And the incredible thing is that the people who typically treat teeth, which are dentists and oral hygienists, mm. go, oh, it's caused by a bug. Let's give them a dose of mouthwash, which is full of chlorhexidine, which yep. kills all Bugs, which yep. is I good, mean, bad, enough. Most of your mainstream ones that are out there. So yep. I'd imagine Listerine uh, would be sort of right up there. Yeah, uh, like that one. I think Savicol contains the the potent chlorhexidine. But that's right. the ones recommended by the dentist because my de mm. dentist recommended that to me, and I said, yeah. "What are you What are you trying to do? Kill all the bugs in my mouth?" He said, "Absolutely, it causes dental caries." Yeah, and I'm going. And here we oh. are. Yeah. <laughs> and if, this is a really cool paper that we had Scary. before. I found one that showed um, dental caries in children in particular. So which they went, it, that means cavities, right? Yeah, yeah. holes in the teeth for yep. the children. Mm. The kids that had a heap of holes in their teeth had specific bugs that the ones that didn't have holes in their teeth yeah. did right. not have living in their teeth. So when we look at these things saying, yeah, you've got bacteria through your mouth, 
we've got to kill that off. Yeah. That's like so dumb because yeah. the reality is, is there's some bacteria that are absolutely essential for maintaining the health of your mucosa of and, course. And, and building the teeth. They, they got, you've got to have bugs all over your teeth. We just don't want a heap of firmicutes all over your teeth because mm. they convert, they make you eat the sugars and the sugars convert to acid and they degrade your teeth. It and they've firmicutes. straight out been associated, in particular strep and lactobacillus, mm. with holes in your teeth yeah of course that um and so having an antimicrobial is very very temporary for your mouth because like i just said Mm. most of this stuff's in your mouth is because you're coming through because you're eating it Mm. it's just there it's on your food it's on your hands it's on the surfaces you put it straight back so you you wipe out your normal commensal flora that has created a bio barrier that keeps the mouth so they're under they're control. Sort of protect it and look you after sterilize, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're sterilizing your first line defense. So Kill then the next too. thing that comes in can just thrive. Yes. Mm. And then it, it there comes in. It doesn't have to really fully establish and colonize to be able to start feeding on sugar and making mm. acids and rotting your teeth. So if, if these typical mouthwash, you know, the, the, the mainstream ones, if you like, the ones that you get at the supermarket or whatever, yeah. you just come in and just bomb the living daylights out of everything. It's, cult, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, shock and awe. Yeah, yeah, yeah Everything's exactly. dead, right? Yeah. So obviously you want to kill the bad bugs. How do you kill the bad bugs and promote the good bugs? Because well, that's, that's what you want. Well, that's where we look at those things that to specifically knock, knock out the firmicutes and then support mm. the others. So the best ones that are showing up, weird stuff like yerba mate, yeah. um, hibiscus, which you can do as herbal oh, teas. Yeah, right. Cinnamon, cinnamon's very good for it. Cranberry is excellent. Yeah. Cranberry is a really good one. And the other cool thing about cranberry is it'll support the production of acomansia, which is a really cool good bug one. that prevents dental caries as well. It's also good um, for... Very um, good for fat loss and energy yeah, and it, metabolism. Because it, exactly. Yeah. So, so cranberries, um, hibiscus, cinnamon, uh, yerba mate, um, berberine. Um, propolis. That's horrible. Yeah, propolis. Yeah, propolis. Yeah. Propolis, well, propolis is that stuff pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, sometimes. Mm. And the, the, not the good stuff. Oh, that's the bee <laughs> stuff, is Yeah, it? it's the stuff that the bees line their hives to yeah. stop an overgrowth of certain bugs. Because mm. I know... Um, yeah, and typically fungi and mold. But oh. oil pulling and that sort of stuff yeah. is also another really good way. So, so coconut oil This is one of the way... The oil, exactly. So this yep. is what, oh, it's still popular. It's really it? good. Yeah. yeah. Also changing the um, environment to be less acidic and more alkaline, which is why the bicarb. And so post-meal doing the bicarb carbs because your saliva is supposed to be alkaline not acid yeah it's supposed to be isn't that right slightly, alkaline, slightly yeah. alkaline more on the alkaline yeah. side so if you can have that extra bicarb like even rinsing bicarb would be better than rinsing an antimicrobial wash yeah. um but then doing oil pulling and then bicarbs and that sort of stuff and a good levels of minerals coming through that that's a the way to regulate and also the biggest thing and it regardless of what supplement you're taking. I don't care if you, what you're doing. And like we, we sell a product called Gut Right that's specifically designed to knock off the firmicutes and support the others. Even if you are doing Gut Right, even if you're doing the Gut Right three times a day, you can totally offset the effects of gut right by eating a whole heap of sugary shit. Mm. Like you got to, people need to under like supplement. Like you ever look at gut right is there to compensate for the lack of polyphenols in our foods, which is allowed for these firmicutes to grow. But you could override the effects of cinnamons and cranberries and all that sort of stuff that's in the gut right by eating a lot of sugar mm. because it's just going to st- continually to feed. And why would they suck in the poison when you have, there's nice food there to make them thrive? Mm. So this is very important for people to realize that the mouth, especially in when we're talking it's about like, the mouth, because there's a lot of, it's it's right there. You can't, it's not going through all these phases of digestion where we can pick different types of sugars. It reminds me of my son, Corbin. It's like, you know, okay, so I want him to eat his vegetables. You know, you're not going to give him like, you know, pizza mm. or, or lollies and then go, great, eat that first and now, now go and eat your, your vegetables. It's like, no, starve him of all that stuff. And he has to eat his vegetables because he's hungry. Hungry, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I had one client that was a real problematic client for me and they were taking everything when I was a naturopath. I had them on all the good stuff and it just wasn't working. And I was just like, I can't understand what, no, I just couldn't understand. Are you taking the stuff? You know, really quiz it down. Said, no, I am, I am. It's so horrible, but I am taking it. And I said, how do you take it? Well, the only way I can take it is in a glass of Coca-Cola. Wow. So this guy didn't drink Coca-Cola before he saw me. <laughs> so I never assumed, I never thought to ask. Yeah. Um, well, wow. But what he started doing, because I gave him these supplements that tasted bad and he tried everything and he had Coca-Cola in the fridge from something. So we decided to... Mix, so he was taking his supplements three times a day with a big glass of Coca-Cola. So it didn't really matter what we gave him. He was offsetting the effects pretty effectively with the Coke. Um, oh, actually, that reminds me, and this isn't an intentional segue. 
There's a really cool paper I got here on the demineralization, remineralization dynamics in teeth and bone. That looks like And it is a really cool paper because it actually has got some really cool pictures and shows you how the phosphoric acids and things, how the actual, how you start off with this normal enamel that's like Mm. a tough brick wall. Mm. And then it actually shows how these acids get in and create these holes. And then it goes and shows that you get rid of the acids and the enamel fills back in. It's like a really Ooh. cool picture that shows how we get these holes through our teeth from these acids. I actually just go in and just degrade this little mm. spot that they touch. And then once you get them out, then that bit just naturally fills back in. But and if you're constantly reloading the bloody things, yeah. and this was talking about um, cola beverages. Well, cola beverages is a, is a double whammy because it's full of orthophosphoric acid, yeah. carbonic acid, and sugars. And now remember, orthophosphoric acid has even been studied for its ability to digest what? gallstones yeah. and its ability to break down calcifications it's, on myelin sheaths and stuff. Wow. It's a compound in Coke that. Yeah. It's the one that is eats everything away. Yeah, yeah. You put it on your rust and yeah, it yeah. Is, it found, is it found in everything? No, like no, all just, colas? It just. Yeah, well, a lot of colas. Mm. I don't know about a lot. I know about mm. Coke cola because it mm. gives you that nice acidy flavor that a lot of people mm. crave when right. they drink coke when you got that much sugar yeah if you were to work out the amount of sugar that's in a coke a glass of coca-cola mm. you, for starters you can't actually dissolve that amount of sugar in that much water mm. it's beyond saturation point they need to actually add in other forms of acids and chemical reactions to be able to maintain that degree of sugar within solution and, and then the problem is is it's too sweet so they've got to offset it with acids, acids. and because you've got to remember, I don't. I'm straight, I'm straight it, it's like the I classic the food science. In, in food things, you've got acids, and you, the thing that counts as acids is sugar. Sugar, sure. So if you had lemon juice, it's like, Ugh. but then you add sugar to it, you got lemonade. Yeah. Ah, it tastes great. So you have this, but, but if you just put sugar in a can of Coke, the amount of sugar, and someone can do drink it, it. Mm. it tastes too sweet. I mean, my dumb brain sitting here thinking, so if we Why added less sugar, add less sugar, sugar. Less exactly. Acid. Right, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm going to. Yeah, so. but no, you need to hit the bliss point because it's to do with intensity. Yeah, yeah. less flavour. Because you've got to get that intensity to hit the bliss point we've been trained for. And the bliss point's a combination of acid, salt, sweet, and umami at a level mm. of intensity that triggers. Uh, chemical it's interesting reactions. stuff, eh? Oh, hell yeah. Hey, hey, that's what know. I said to Tony today. Like, it's our 21st wedding anniversary today. Oh, oh my God. I said, I said after 21 and what years, are you doing here? we've hit the bliss point. It's like, anyway, so but yes, uh, the bliss period. point. Bliss point. <laughs> okay, good. 21 years. That's awesome. Is, that, is that the bliss point? I don't know. I'm Fuck still waiting for it. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. It's three lots of the seven year itch. So Jeez. I think by now you're done. Yeah. You're stuck. Oh, there. I didn't know that. That's nah, great. I said good day to Tony this morning. Didn't wish her a happy. Oh, you didn't say what? Or commiserate her on him. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not on Facebook. <laughs> Probably more YouTube like stuff. it. But yeah. Oh. Um, no, but uh, yeah, that's the bliss. Po- we're talking about bliss point. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you get to that apex point. It's the same as obviously combining um, salts with fats and those yeah. sorts of things as well, too. The yeah. salt cuts through the fat. <laughs> Acid right. cuts through fat. I don't know. Right. You got a strange look on your face. <laughs> it's like 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 vinaigrettes. They, they, if you just had the vinegar part, the acetic acid part. I tell you what tastes really great is this popcorn, this natural popcorn that my boys get, which has got a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt in it. All right. And the combination of the two again, I don't know what you call it, Matt. <laughs> I, don't know, I just got the giggles for some sure. Just you two talk about talk yeah. amongst ourselves. But you know, it's that it's that combination of sweet and sour. You yeah. know what I mean? Again, even with Chinese and all the Chinese rest of it. Food. Once you get those things and they're sort of hitting both receptors at the same yeah, exactly. time. Exactly. And it gives you the bliss point. Absolutely. Mm. But the good news is I've got some good news about a new toothpaste or fairly new toothpaste ingredient that's come out. So hang on. Well, who, who regulates toothpaste? I'm really curious. Yeah, it's a cosmetic. It because, doesn't come so under a cos- food. Did you know? You know, toothpaste. Yeah, you told me. You don't. You can put stuff in toothpaste you could never put in any lozenge, lolly, supplement, or anything because on the toothpaste it says to spit it out. Not to be it's not ingested. ingested, which means you can get away with all sorts of stuff. One such ingredient is, is triclosan, which is a fantastic antimicrobial. What's it called? Sorry, triclosan. Triclosan. Yeah, hmm. and what you try it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's funny because because it's not a food, it's been banned because it's a toxin, banned to be in contact with foods, but it's allowed in toothpastes. Yeah. And what does it do? It kills bugs. Any bugs. Any well, bugs. And funny, the, 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 I've given you only some good news is that it does help get rid of dental caries. That's good. Right. The problem is it's very toxic for you. It's is it any worse than a tea tree or, a, you know, like these natural no, microbials? Because, you know, like a tea tree or something, it just indiscriminately kills things. Yeah, it does. So if you get a toothpaste that's full of tea tree oils and those sort of things, is it? 
Yeah, but this stuff's toxic. It also it stuffs up your endocrine system. Oh, okay. It's an aromatase a, inhibitor. Oh, really? Yeah, That's cytochrome right, P4, 50, 1981. Unless you've got you polycystic you ovarian syndrome, you're in big trouble. Or the mainstream toothpaste have this in No, it? no. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Like, can I mention the brand? Sure. I guess again. I mean, a, if it's got it in there, it's got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, mm. it's one of the actors. It's on their label. Colgate so. Total. Okay. And so it's on the label. I'm not right. giving yeah. it away. It's, it's up to 3%, uh, 0.3%, because at 0.35%, it's considered a toxin and not allowed in anything. So, oh. so, so what they poison. turn around... But what if know, I do I a guess, big swirl instead of... Ah, oh, then you're in trouble. But, but and here's the thing, right? So, I mean, I guess it comes down to one, they would argue, well, it's not being ingested and you must use as directed. So that's that's the defence is that if you put it into your mouth, it must be spit out. But how it much toothpaste? Says, do not swallow. What are the Colgate yeah. total so instructions of how much toothpaste do I put on my toothbrush? <laughs> do they actually tell yeah, you? Yeah, they dose? do. Don't do they like give a, you a, a dose? Pee, do they? About a P is what's recommended. So if you but it doesn't it, matter because it's not to be ingested, man. Yeah. But so therefore, if you're not ingesting it, you can put a, you can squirt the whole tube on there. Except, yeah. except wash there, it in your mouth and then spit the whole thing out. There, there was a study done on pregnant women. That use toothpaste as directed, and they found it in their bloodstream, in the baby's core. It also disrupted the microbes of the baby they were breastfeeding. Uh, so it gets wow, in. Wow, man. Because you got to remember, this, this, this stuff, you know, a lot of people put drugs, like if you're having a heart attack. No, like I said, they put, don't have to comply with the laws revolving lozenges yeah. or even confectionery or even chewing gum. Uh, now, chewing gum, hey, where's chewing gum? Just curiosity. Yeah, that's a. Oh, God, is that, I didn't look that. I, that I what's know. wrong with you, Steve? I because we told that you've got to chew that out, uh, spit that out as well, so they can get away. Tampons Probably. was the other one. Remember tampons? Oh, yeah. They did never, because you don't eat them uh, and they you take them out, they could get away with stuff. What? That's a they could, visual. Oh, what if, they <laughs> used, what if they didn't use blue water on the tampon yeah. ads? You only oh. use blue water to show its absorbent capacity? Imagine if I used red water. Like all of a sudden, it'd be like, "Get that ad off TV." Off TV, it's terrible. It? Anywho, it's can, can I give you some more bad news about dry closing? Yeah, do that. All right. It was published um, in June <laughs> this year, um, and it's a basic, basically described here as a universal disruptor of the mitochondria. Oh, are you serious? Absolutely, absolutely. And <laughs> the beautiful thing about it, it says these mechanisms provide partial explanation for the triclosan's adverse effects on human reproduction, immunology, and development. Oh. But, but gonna, put it in your teeth. Put it in your teeth. And it's not allowed to be put with food, but it's allowed to be put on your teeth. Now, just have a think about that for a second. Yeah. Not allowed with food. It's a poison. It's listed as a poison. The, the, the Europeans class it a poison. So it's obviously days. allowed in cosmetics. Because yeah, teeth, uh, the toothpaste is um, regulated under a cosmetic. Yep. Um, there, there's one thing that gets you a little bit worse than that too. That if a if a woman uses it as directed, and this is published this year in a paper, it basically increased the risk of gestational diabetes for the mum. What oh. paper, Steve? What that paper was published that? in Science Total Environment, 2018, June. Pretty um, recent. Yeah, and that was studied on a whole heap of Chinese women. So, incredibly oh, yeah. bad birth weights became quite huge because of wow. the. Uh, and for for a bit of perspective on mm. for that too, like so, when we talk about these mitochondria, a lot of people think it's our energy production pathways, but it's also our active transport pumps for our ability to absorb nutrients. Yep. It also catalyzes vasodilation. It catalyzes a conversion of. <clears throat> nitrites to nitrate. A lot of these different little weird stuff. Now, for example, yeah, that's right. the mouthwash around the that beetroot. You know, yeah, did those studies on the beetroot, yeah. where mm. beetroots are a good source of nitrites uh, or nitrates um, that live in the mucosa. The bacteria there convert it to nitrites, which goes into your bloodstream for nitric oxide vasodilation to prevent cardiovascular disease. This is one of the ways why foods, vegetables, prevent cardiovascular disease mm. interacting with the microbiome. Totally wiped out if you use an antibacterial mouthwash. Amazing, isn't it? Can I just give you one more bad thing about triclosan? Oh, it sounds fantastic. It's, Do it. Uh, triclosan may promote breast cancer progression via estrogen receptor mediated signaling cascade. You serious? Yep. Hey, that's, that's what that's, are we find out what else that stuff is in for us, Steve. I bet you it's in. Um, I wonder if it's in um, deodorant. Uh, deodorant. No, and it's not in deodorant. Oh. I used to make deodorant. They they put um, you know aluminium chlorohydrate. Yeah, in Yeah, but it. no, don't they do any microbial stuff as well in um, deodorants now? The to aluminium stop the chlorohydrate stench? kills everything. It kills it everything. Yeah, ten yeah. percent of the dose they do. Yeah, so good don't stuff. breathe when you if you're going to use the toxic waste. But in 2010, good news. That, yeah, use a roll on if you need to. 2000, the European Union banned triclosan in all products that came in contact with food, but it's still allowed in toothpaste in Australia. 
up to point three percent. Is it allowed overseas as well too, though, Steve? Because I'm in toothpaste. No, 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 not in not in a lot of countries because right. it See, was it was declared a p- poison by the Australian Department of Health's National Indus- Industrial Chemists and Notification of Assessment Scheme, but it was allowed up to point three. Yeah. percent in toothpaste so point three one it becomes a, listed as a poison but point three so but this is what i'm saying they're not dose. telling you how much to dose I know. so they're saying point three percent but it's at all, what level because yeah. it's not a percentage like i mean it's not yeah. corrosive if i hit it at point five percent all of a sudden it's it's like it's a dose isn't it toxin, so it's yeah. a dose dependent toxin so they're yeah. saying you can add it at a percentage but they're not regulating how much we ingest correct and they're not even educating us of what the amount is that if you go beyond, that is all of a sudden at the toxic level of... Absolutely correct. Um, there was a Professor Walsh at the University yeah. of Dentistry that was um, supported by Colgate. But anyway, we'll just probably leave that aside. And he said there's an animal study is an animal study. The evidence does not translate to humans. There has been no concerns raised on our side that we have seen on the patients. This regards triclosan. Yes, because of this people because like that, they, compl- they complain to people like that. He says, nah, it's got nothing to do with it. Exactly. It doesn't get added to any adverse now, I, I've database. Just, I've just quoted studies that you can get off PubMed. But you would never do it. Like, seriously, man, if you, yeah. if I if I was to yeah. go back to my doctor or something like that and say that I've suddenly got breast cancer, um, I feel like my cystic ovaries have got worse, mm. blah, 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 they might go through and have a look at everything. Maybe even talk to me about my underarm deodorant Maybe. Um, for my breast cancer. Or they might talk about my diet or exposure. They, they might ask questions or might say, geez, you're unlucky genetically, mm. um, more likely, but... I don't think any one of them would go back and go, oh, let's talk toothpaste. No. I would never have considered that an antimicrobial agent in toothpaste contributing to hormonal defects That's, in, um, in my That clients. was published, like, Chemical Resin Toxicity 2014, for those who are following at yeah. home. Um, so, so it's absolutely an estrogen receptor-mediated signal in cascade. So that's all being banned. In to- the other, I found this... Not in toothpaste. This massive paper in on fluoride it looks like through europe they're banning fluoridation a lot of the water in europe they're even banning fluoride addition to toothpaste because they're finding all sorts of problems wow. the place where they really need to do something about it is iran mm. the fluoridation and the skeletal fluorosis and the amount of fluoride toxicity that's occurring in certain parts of the world in particular places like iran is contributing to fertility and and it's um, gone way and, beyond and, just pitting of teeth oh hell yeah because f- the problem is is a demineralization of your teeth in any particular direction will cause a destruction. Yeah. So what I'm saying is too much fluoride in, in proportion to calciums and things like that will cause a problem teeth. It'll cause them to be brittle, it gets them white specks all over them, they break up, does the same thing to your bone. We need to have this right mix mm. of collagen, minerals, and some fluoride. And the fluoride's mainly for the enamel, to harden the enamel. It's not too much in for the other stuff so the the only time you need that fluoride on your teeth is when you're going through those growth phases like Mm -hmm. in the children that are building lots of teeth and adding lots of enamel because otherwise what happens is the fluoride's got nowhere to go i don't know if you know this but there's massive amounts of fluoride in our foods i was just about to ask you where do you get fluoride from wheat wheat many people eat wheat yeah tea is the the highest green and black tea loaded full of green Ceylon tea. tea is really high yeah, as well no. um, and drinking water in certain places yeah. soya beans is really high as well yeah. um, certain herbs and that sort of stuff as well but if you think about the population out there they put drink they put water you know fluoride into the water for everyone because there's a small group of young developing children that can benefit from the extra fluoride applied to their teeth but we're talking sodium fluoride, calcium fluoride, not aluminium, silico fluoride, mm, which mm. is what they put into our water. And we're talking about on the teeth, but that's what dentists are for. You go to the dentist yep. and you can do your fluoride treatments and you can control it, mm. the fluorid, fluoridation onto your teeth through that mechanism. Yeah. The big problem is the elderly. They're not growing teeth. They don't even, a lot of them don't even have teeth. They're not growing bone. They're trying to remodel their bone. So they're in a phase of not mm. growing new bone. They're trying to carve up their old spurs and carve up the, the osteophytes and try mm. to reorganize a little bit of flexibility and elasticity and restructure to their bone. They're not building large amounts of bone where they need building blocks on top of building blocks like young children do. They also sit there not with filtered water or purchased spring water from the Alps or whatever, they actually are using tap water and often with a pot of tea. So if oh, you, yeah. and, and the only thing I, a lot of, especially in places like Australia where we don't really look after our elderly population well enough, I believe, they're left with eating bread 
Um, they're stuck to eat bread and drink on cups of tea all day. So they get actual a lot of problems with too much fluoride, which mm. causes um, a form of arthritis that causes their brain to be slower, dementias and all that sort of stuff. So they're the biggest, highest risk population. Very dangerous. And they don't even have bloody teeth. So we don't and even want to be forcing them to consume the extra fluoride. But they're the group that can't avoid it. Avoid yeah, it. Yeah. The other... The groups that can afford the, the dental hygiene, that can go to the dentist, that can have the health cover, are also getting the um, the water filters and the, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it's very there's a there's a groups of people that are really suffering, and it's and when you actually look through this 51 page document that goes through and said, hey, these are the benefits of fluoride. This isn't this is a review of all the clinical data. Like I said, it's 51 pages, but the summary only goes for a few pages, and the summary basically says fluoride very good at improving the hardening of the enamel for this particular percentage when it's done this particular way yeah. but it does go on to say that the world health organization needs to stop pushing the fluoridation of water mm -hmm. and at the same time pushing the use of fluoride products because there is a major problem with fluoride toxicity globally and this has come now saying that the world health organization should be pushing the use of other herbal stuff tamarins and mm. moringa and this is actually talking other papers saying things like tamarind moringa um i'll, I'll, I'll publish it. we'll get it up somewhere for everyone to see this list of things but telling the world health organization to advertise people do these things to actually stop fluoride toxicity because there's more problems with fluoride toxicity now across the world than there is with fluoride deficiency oh, you put it in the and, water it's mass yeah. medication it, it, it's it's philosophically i'm against yeah but you got some everyone. idiot doing it too i don't forget i come from Mackay up you know north queens a bit further up north and and so they they fluoridated the water in Mackay. there was a phase where it went through the Mackay thing the newspapers and the local community talking about just dodge the water for a few days because the idiot that tips the stuff into the bag put too much in. and there's a whole heap of people started going into the hospital with asthma attacks and allergic oh, reactions gosh. and they traced it back to the excessive doses of fluoride that went into the water it's going to take a little while yeah, for us to fluoride. to dilute that it's aluminium silico fluoride with a big skull crossbones that comes out of the point. aluminium smelters yeah that's it yeah exactly. and, and Ed, what's funny and even if this review it talks about the history of the fluoride saying that that it, you've got to realise that the majority of the data that we have on fluoride is all about toxicity because that was the concern. They actually initiated all these clinical trials on fluoride to assess its toxicity nature because everything that lived around these aluminium smelters was dying. So they tried to justify that it's not so bad, but then they actually went through and found that maybe it's even good. Mm. And then they went through and said, uh, you know, maybe it's not so bad in killing, maybe that's something else killing it, but these, it actually seems to be really good for their teeth. Well, Matt, well, that's just alarmist hate speech, yes. all of that. But well, not really, because no, I'm joking, mate. This, but this is what they say. <laughs> this is what, what they say. Oh, you're just you're, you're 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 alarming the public. Uh, actually, bloody oath, we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, <laughs> you this, should be alarmed. This is the other thing too. To, to, um, me personally, at the age of 42, I still don't have a feeling, but I haven't been in the dentist for a while. But I should do that. I'm going next week, so that's why I did this podcast today. Um, next week, I might be able to say, "Man, my teeth are full of holes." But um, <laughs> no. Um, but when I was a child, my mum, they, the, the local council supplied fluoride tablets. Uh -huh. There wasn't fluoride water. It was for children going mm -hmm. through a particular growth phase. Yeah, right. Can take fluoride tablets. Mum does believe that triggered my asthma. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a very bad phase of asthma, which led to a lot of prednisone and then a form of osteoporosis mm -hmm. and everything like that. But yeah. man, my teeth are tough as nails. Right. I can dig and climb and everything with these things. Yeah, no fill-ins. But a lot of that would have been the fluoride and then that using the Colgate toothpaste my whole life. And you know, But this is just what we did. Like mm. That was the mainstream yeah, yeah. in Australia. Mm. It's what we've done. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably... got so, some I joint mean, problems and mental retardation from it. But oh, that's my obvious. teeth... Yeah, yeah. The, the, the interesting thing is, is that I think a lot of people will be listening to this going, well, hang on, I use Listerine and I use Colgate. What are the alternatives, Steve? I mean, there's plenty of brands out there that are natural brands. People use um, a lot of um, charcoal, for example, as well, too. I mean, there's, yeah. uh, you know, coconut pulling, a, a fantastic thing. Uh, the best coconut way to do it pulling. is like coconut oil pulling yeah, yeah. Um, is to is to do it in the shower in the morning. When you, when you do it, just do it. It only takes a few minutes. Yeah, pull yeah. it in the shower. Let, let, let's even go. <laughs> oh, I'll be doing it wrong. Yeah. There's, there's, you use oil? Yeah. Okay, so so there's the, all the natural ones, which are terrific, and, and charcoal is great, it looks dark, but, but even if you want to go to a more mild toothpaste, there's some that don't have, you know, you know, tri trichlorin in it. And you've got to remember, trichlorin, like, like if you present to a doctor with just huge bad, bad energy, for example, you can't get anything done. 
Well, this chemical also uncouples your proteins and stops all your energy spinning. There was, there was one study where they, they, they compared it to a one, one called dinitrophenol, which is a band uncoupling agent chemical yeah. this was 60 <laughs> times band. more potent yeah. 60, than the band six zero six zero times more potent uh reference toxicology applied pharmacology 2018 what was that again uh this was um the the triclosan it was 60 times more potent than the band uncoupler um dinitrophenol isn't uncoupling proteins good not that good it's like you know, it's good to put your uncoupling your foot on the proteins for fat fatty loss. acid oxidation. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but, but, but if you completely uncouple your proteins, you actually get no work done. You get no calcium. Well, you know, and, and what actually happens as well is you don't you get a defect with your fatty acid oxidation where you actually overwhelm the yeah. mitochondria with fat. You get dysfunction, and it actually contributes to insulin resistance yeah. and mitochondria. So one of the main causes of insulin resistance systemically is the inability for the mitochondria to remove all of the liberated fat and burn it so it basically gums up and blocks up is that Mm. what we're talking about exactly the uncoupling proteins are just driving too much fat into the mitochondria yeah and also it's it's like uncoupling is like putting your foot on the clutch when you're driving a manual Mm. and it just makes the engine spin and burn more energy but if you put your foot flat to the clutch like this thing's doing it it just completely stuffs up and causes what they call universal disruption of the mitochondria so basically floods the engine floods the engine with fats yep you can't get complete combustion because yeah, we need the fats plus the oxygen otherwise it's like shit in the car yeah we're and, talking and, about and the you, engine you analogies you can't create the atp to move yeah and what and happens as well for when you get the shit in the car you'd blow a lot of smoke if you're a car mm. in humans we don't have an exhaust pipe to eliminate that waste so that incomplete combustion results in metabolic waste Absolutely. that contributes to fatigue insulin resistance and mitochondrial dysfunction human reproduction mitochondrial and if that mitochondria is involved in an immune process Mm. or a a digestive or or a gut wall um to be able to create a nice tight junction between the cells so that that mitochondrial defect can result in um immune defects um absorption and failure Mm. to thrive Mm -hmm. um leaky gut wall yeah. is it still what do we call it when it's in our mouth so it's still leaky gut wall yeah because it's the same mucosa so. yeah. but yeah so a lot of people talk about leaky gut wall i don't think i acknowledge that this might be happening in but, the mouth but it's not only leaky you can absorb drugs under the tongue you yeah sublingual drugs yeah yeah you, we can do b12 but people do uh, nitrous if they're having a heart attack yeah they get nitrous extremely quickly so it's already leaky yeah and so if you're putting this stuff in your mouth like let's say you're using it as a toothpaste well, a lot yeah. of people are then it's going to get into so your body. So systemically, it's going through your mitochondria. Even even without leaky gut yeah. thing, it's getting in there anyway. Bit scary, isn't it? Yeah, man. It actually really is. When because it, it really is for. I've yeah. never considered this. I never ever considered that a toothpaste or a compound that we're just doing in our mouth would have systemic fatigue. And yeah. I, I, it's stupid of me to think of it, you know, because of that all that stuff you said. It's mm. kind of makes a common sense, but. It's just not. It's just never made that real connection. No, it's it's incredibly dangerous. Geez, I learn a lot more doing this than actually. When you're in a clinic and you're in amongst doing stuff, you're kind of dealing with things as you go. Mm. Yeah, you, you're kind of trying to, you know, to a certain degree, get through the days and get through the appointments. But actually, when you stop, sit back, and we do these weekly podcasts. Every I was only saying to Vanessa earlier, the amount of stuff I'm learning now, each week, just something new, and it, mm. it's kind of cool, eh? It's incredible. I learn something new when I research. So, it. if you think about the mouth inflammation immune activity even structural changes like the movement of teeth and like I, well, I said before before too my wisdom tooth just coming through now mm. so i must have learned so i've discovered something, something new um but so the tr- tmj the joint so we're talking about structural stuff inflammatory stuff um immune signals mm-hmm. um cascade priorities in regards to fuel burning mitochondrial things so it's no surprise that at Someone that's putting up with a gingivitis and a hole in their tooth could significantly get um, cardiovascular disease. A bit. But I'd never really linked it through to things like polycystic ovarian syndrome or obesity. I never mm. would have thought of that or, or a chronic fatigue-like syndrome because if that mitochondrial, that could cause systemic fatigue. Yeah. Man, so fixing up your mouth could potentially help with a whole host of diseases. Yeah, well, well, just, well just sleep, stress. Yeah, absolutely, stress. Chronic disease, inflammation. You could have arthritic yeah. conditions. It might be all initiated by an ongoing inflammatory condition So therefore, in if you fix the mouth, yeah. the body with the right tools might be able to heal itself. Well, a lot of it. And yeah. then you've got to realise it's going to totally change your priorities when you're eating. Because you've got to remember, if you're eating, your body's trying to decide, what am I eating this for? Am I eating this for regeneration and repair? Where am I going to drive these nutrients? Mm. Am I going to drive those aminos 
to turn into sugar because I'm in a stressful environment trying to make um, energy? Am I going to use this stuff for building blocks, recovery, repair? Mm. Am I going to ask that immune system to clean up this mess or tell the immune system to back off? Like your mouth will totally change your priorities. Absolutely. Well, and, and in hospital even, they're, they're giving people periodontal checkups in cardiology. Oh, Beck, thank Beck, wow. Beck, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's got, well, when Beck said that to me, who's a nurse in cardiology mm. my wife, uh, she, she, I said, really? They're, they're actually mm. onto that. They're, they're, yeah. they're behind in a lot of other areas, in my opinion. That's you know, great. Just, but that one, I went, you beauty. And, you know, papers like this one that's titled, and it'll just give, you, give it away, yeah. uh, evidence summary, the relationship between oral and cardiovascular disease says there's a strong link. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, and well we've known established. that for a while, haven't we, yeah. Steve? Yeah. 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 Now my brain's yeah. just rolling through all the different things. Like, for example, the somatopsychic link. Mm. One thing that um, I feel really sad when I see this, and I know, that, you know this is something my mum's done because she's had done it her whole life because of when she's a child she mm. had some stuff happen with her teeth. But, you know, those people that cover their mouth, they can't smile. Mm. They actually change the way they react mm. emotionally to things because they're trying to – they're self-conscious about their teeth. Mm. You know, there's people that all of a sudden they can't smile. They're very self-conscious. They, and they try to normally do a big belly laugh and, and enjoy a moment. Mm. Their brain quickly flicks to fear of the future if mm. people judge my mouth or mm. experiences from the past. It, it just – the somatopsychic link and the potential for depressions and things like that because you just won't allow you to just be free within the body you own. And there's so many little links with this sort of stuff. Um, remember too, um, we talked about the elderly and the teeth. Another thing with the teeth, uh, you know, smokers and those sort of stuff have got really oh, yeah. bad teeth. Yeah. <clears throat> we looked at, the, uh, there's a picture we'll show people with this cool, shows the blood vessels that go into the teeth. So a major problem with teeth is lack of oxygen from mm. the blood supply. Mm, right. um, in my naturopath clinic, um, one of the major important things I used to do with my elderly client, anyone that went on to a statin medication, like a cholesterol medication, that stops your body making coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is really important for driving oxygen into your gums and and remember, gums are very different. Yeah, because your mouth, because <clears throat> your mouth's full of water. When you cut your mouth, it doesn't clot real easily. Mm. So the blood vessels that run through your gums are very different. They're like little bubbles, and it goes from that bubble to that bubble to that bubble. So if you get a wound, it can just shut down that yeah. lot of bubbles, and you you stop bleeding really quickly. Where if it was attached to an artery, it just would never clot and nice. just keep bleeding through yeah. your mouth. <clears throat> so the diffusion and the transfer of oxygen across those membranes is very different in your mouth to what you'd give a circulatory stimulant to any other parts of your body there's new research now coming talking about topical coenzyme q10 has the ability to go through and prevent a lot of these problems so coenzyme q10 is really interesting in particular if you're someone that does a lot of has a lot of cholesterol issues or has a is on cholesterol medication and they're no longer making it. Another one that's really important while we're just talking about cholesterol medication is the vitamin Ds. Because mm -hmm. if you're blocking the production of coenzyme Q10, you're blocking the production of vitamin D, you can't control your mineralization of your teeth and your mm -hmm. teeth will rot. And guess what you get? Cardiovascular disease. Yep. And then they say, well, you need to get on cholesterol medication because <laughs> it's all cholesterol that's going to kill you. It is. It's terrible. Um, Man, this is cool. I never expected to, to come across so many weird ass things today. Well, let, let's let's take the worst case scenario. Let's say Matt next week you need um, you know some fillings filled up. What would you fill it up with? Because there's a new just take the tooth, mate. Take the tooth. Oh, jeez, that's Cause extreme. You got a tiny little hole. <laughs> just take the tooth. You know they came out with a new type of amalgam about a year and a half ago. What is it? Really cool. Higher in copper. Um, the only copper. problem there's a slight side effect though. Just we'll let you know. Um, the title of this paper reads Increased Mercury Emissions from Modern Dental Amalgams. So Get it releases out. more mercury. It releases more mercury. It. But it releases more mercury, but this is the scariest bit from this paper. It says there exists no limit for maximum allowed emission of mercury from dental amalgams. Hey, say that again. There exists no limit for the maximum allowed emission of mercury from dental amalgams. What about... What, a, what about the LED the 50 kind of numbers? No. So LED 50 means lethal dose 50, do, uh, do, do you, do you where they know? kill 50% of the population at this particular dose. Do, right. do, do you want to know why there's no limit to the amount of mercury? I can, can have it yes. food. Because you're, you're not um, inhaling it? it. Well, yes, yes and no. You're both right, actually. It's because the American Dental Association came out with a new position statement on amalgams. When? Um, in 2016, September 30. Yeah. And it said, a recent study, blah, 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 um, 
basically the American Dental Association, they've been pro-mercury for years, right? But they came out recently and said the American Dental Association examined the study and its findings reaffirm, reaffirms its position that dental amalgam is durable, safe and effective cavity filling option. Otherwise, they're up for a lot of lawsuits of people coming Absolutely. back to say, you know, geez, we've seen this now, before. Now, it's, 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 it's called covering it, your ass. Covering their ass. White paper. Well, so, it's, it's, mm. it's deny, 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 yeah. deny yep. until it gets... I mean, it's the same thing with smoking. I mean, let's face it. This is nothing new. No. We've seen this before as well too. Deny in the point mm. blank face of absolutely yeah. overwhelming evidence. Yep. Get your lawyers... Deny yeah. and they're doing no, it round up and everything now yeah. too. So. You know, no. Oh, the method of action is different. No, because it's in your mouth. You're chewing. There's no. You can't no. inhale. It's not getting in. It's completely. You know, th- these are all the arguments that they're going to make. And they right? probably, if you go, we should get that full paper and really read through the methodology. See if they eliminated people with mercury toxicity or something. Oh, these guys. Yeah, from the study because it's well, funny when you really analyze those things. There's just more amalgam coming mm. out, more yeah. mercury being vaporized, and they don't care because there's no limit for it. So, so in your chemistry experience, how were you allowed to deal with mercury vapors? Well, there was there was there was two there's two allowable safe places to store mercury. When we used to use mercury in an industrial lab, we used to pour the remaining mercury in an oil. It was a conical flask that had a special lid on it, air type lid on it with a plastic seal under it, mm. and we poured it and went through the oil and sat in the bottom, so it was under a big layer of oil. And then you put that at the back of the fume hood. Is that was, because of what we call mercury emissions? Yes. And so then you tightened that up to a certain level and went click, click, click. And then you pulled the fume hood down so that it was on all the time. So it was constant being sucked up this vent and being filtered out. That's, that's one allowable safe place for mercury. The only other safe place is in your mouth. But the emissions when they come from your mouth are fine. Absolutely, they're fine. There's no but the emissions in anywhere else, it, it'll dangerous. kill you. And any other exposure would... to mercury has a toxic level. Yes. A level that will kill you or... Yep create problems and, and of course we have studies but those, here. those don't apply to dental stuff because Nothing, the, no the, the dental association reaffirmed their reaffirmed. previous findings that it's okay it's okay no but, but they would they would deny though that yeah. there's any emission whatsoever from the teeth wouldn't they no no they, no, they they're saying they they they've got problems with emissions they, but they those emissions from dental problem uh, from amalgam yeah. is not like no, no mercury problem. from anything completely else. safe durable all that stuff Except there's studies showing that it causes Alzheimer's disease. I mean, they've even yes. taken those mercury thermometers over to a different compound yeah. because you put them in your mouth. It's not safe to put yeah. a mercury thermometer in your mouth in on the off chance that you bite it and break there's, it. There's now a generalized what they call black bay uh, label warning for people that have had mercury fillings. They've got to limit their exposure to electromagnetic fields. So that can be... What, like ins- mobile phones? Mobile phones. Oh, well, the 5G that's coming is not going to yeah. cause a problem, is it? Uh, electrical you, how, how are you going to do that? No, yeah, we've got yeah, aluminium lights. foil hats. We got aluminium. Yeah. Tin foil hats. Oh, no, tin yeah. foil beard. I need a tin foil beard to protect so my fillings in, from in, my frequency. In, inside, you're surrounded by it, but also outside the sun gives electromagnetic radiation. So you've got to avoid going inside or outside, and you'll be safe. <laughs> so is that underground? Something like that. No, I don't know well, what their solution you don't have is. Wi-Fi underground. Um, basically, um, it, they, they did this test on pregnant women and with dental amalgams, and it says it really, really um, limit their exposure to leg magnetic fields to prevent toxic effects of mercury to their fetuses. Wow. Based on his finding, is infants and children are more vulnerable to mercury exposures. Blah blah blah. So you've got to eliminate it if oh, you've got geez. a mercury. Um, also, another study um, in Thailand where it's now 58% more likely to get Parkinson's disease if you have amalgam fillings. 50% so more you've got likely. to avoid it if you're aging, yeah. and if you're young, and yeah. if you're a woman, and yeah. if you're a man. This is a study done. And inside or outside. Correct. But, but apart from I that, choose to identify it's safe. None of those things. Now the vapor, fine. the vapor itself. Yeah, hey, hey. The, the vapor itself is only released when you use your teeth to do this thing called chewing. So oh. if you don't chew, <laughs> it's fairly. What if you so grind? What if you grind your yes. teeth at night? Oh well, you, you, you'll die. But, yeah, but that, yeah. also, if you breathe too, the vapors then go into the lungs. So if you don't breathe, don't, don't breathe. breathe. Don't well, breathe. Well, what if chew. I only breathe out? Oh well, you're fine then. What are you worried about? <laughs> yeah, you're polluting, you're polluting <laughs> what if I breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth only? <laughs> Try to do that all the time. Then you're fine. You're absolutely fine. No well, I seem to breathe. Everyone at home at the moment is probably. Here on the treadmill. It's yeah, really the hard to talk and do this at the same time, Steve. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, but there was a study oh, done on, on people that had a Melbourne Mercury fillings removed, and a lot of their health issues disappeared after five years. I did. I had all. I had a lot of um, yep. amalgam when and I was younger. And their health improved dramatically. A lot of a lot, and I replaced but them all with porcelain. But while they're don't don't you actually get more problems trying to liberate? In the removal process, aren't you going to emit a lot more? Sh- short term, but short long term, term, you, you get, a lot of, um, you get benefits. 
So we, if anyone's going to do it, yeah, good work. If anyone is going to do anything about removing the amalgams to go to a ceramics, are they yeah. good? The calcium they're, they're glass better. ones? Yeah, that's they're what better. I used. The glassy yeah. calcium ones, hey, they got, they got nothing that. too much in them? No, not bad. Yeah. Oh, they're all... I got, I got, oh, no, yeah, yeah. I got no mercury. I, yeah. I actually had an argument with the dentist when I was about thirty when I got my first filling because yeah. she said, "Oh, we'll just fill this up." And I said, oh, "What are you going to fill it? Mercury?" Yeah. And I, I, oh, I, hey, I wasn't joking before when I said remove it. Yeah. So what if 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 I was to get like a big abscess and rotten tooth at the back and whatever, and I'm forty something now, if I just get them to remove it, that it's not that bad, huh? It, the, the very very back molar yeah. uh, is not used as much as the other molars more yeah. proximal. So it depends on which tooth you need filling. Yeah, okay. What but, about okay? What about I've got something else I want to throw at you. What about flossing? Where does that fall into oh. things? Well, flossing actually reduces the incidence of dental caries. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, so that's good because and, and this is where you may look. And this is where you could possibly use chlorhexidine. I'm thinking of a, a thing. Like you get those little picky things and you can dip them in chlorhexidine if you've got an infection between your teeth and just wipe with that. There's yeah. a little small area. That's where it can be useful. Yeah. But you wouldn't rinse your mouth out. Well, this what I was going to say, though, Steve, combined with what Matt said before about, you know, everything from cranberry to what have you, mm. what does perfect oral health care look like to kill the bad bugs, look after the good ones, to look after your teeth, to make sure that they're mineralized well and not impact your health. Have you guys First got thing, an idea? good fiber. Don't, so, don't, don't, don't be a vegan. Yeah. Oh, well, no, no, don't say that. If you're a vegan, yeah. understand that your teeth still need hydroxyproline. So your sources of hydroxyproline, apart from my product flog I'm going to throw in here now, which is our... Vagi- oh. <laughs> I was about to say our hairless vaginos because I've got in the oh. habit of saying that, but our, our v- vegan aminos. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I'm so close to saying vaginas again. All right. Um, so our, Thank goodness you Our don't. vegan aminos, we made hydroxyproline the same mm. way an animal would, uh, like a mammal, like mm. us, like know, by thing. eating proline and vitamin C and making hydroxyproline. So the, the vegan market can consume hydroxyproline from... Our product, alfalfa, Irish moss, are the only ones I know of, or yeah. insects. So, insects, you know, the cocoons yeah. no, and that in the grass. No, what the animals do. So, like, with the animals that have hydroxyproline and good teeth, the vegan, the herbivores. Yeah. So, herbivores eat a lot of insects, but not just insects, but, you know, like the little cocoony stuff yep. that's in the grasses, you know, those, you know, stuff. All that's massive amounts of hydroxyproline. There's a lot of hydroxyproline consumed by herbivores in the animal world. Human vegans, if they consume the hydroxyproline from insects or supplementation, can get the same level of collagen in their teeth and help to protect their teeth. The rest of their problem comes from pH. Mm. And a lot of those pH or acid base balance. So the acid base balance is regulated by the microbial flora. So if a, so it doesn't matter, I don't care who you are, vegan or whatever, we need the collagen. Okay. So mm-hmm. get, make sure you're loaded up on collagen for your gums and everything like that. We also need good levels of quality fiber that will support your friendly bugs, okay? And reducing the amount of simple sugars that we're consuming. So not excessive amounts of fructoses, not excess, sucrose is the worst. Yeah, what, 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 about, so, what about apples? I mean, like in terms of that's got pectin, that's got good fiber. Exactly. I mean, I so what you're looking at in a natural state, so yeah. when you have a look at fructose incorporated into a piece of fruit, we get the fiber, yeah. but normally we would have got a lot more polyphenols in the peels than yeah, we do sure. now. We would have a lot more polyphenols. So that's why that's why we made that gut right product. We filled it up with the polyphenols and it has like apple peel and all that sort of stuff in that product because it's the polyphenols and the fiber that offsets the sugar in the fruit. So unfortunately, food has changed a little bit yeah. where we need to supplement or fortify our diets with more polyphenols. Mm. So the biggest problem is juice. Oh, and that's the biggest problem with kids. you got no idea. In my yeah. natural background, the amount of sure people that would send their kid to bed with a bottle of juice and their children, teeth are rotting. And you're going, how come? Well, they had their milk and they can only have so much milk. So they wanted more, so I gave them juice. So water or stuff is also Even excessive breastfeeding, weird or, weirdly or not, when, they, when the yeah. kid gets tooth, you, you, that, that, that can be bad for their teeth. Yeah, man. Um, so fibre, good fibre. Yes. Really good quality oils. So you need lots of good oils Mm -hmm. and not the bad oils because a lot of the bad trans oils that totally disturb the gut microbiome. Mm. So good quality oils and things like coconuts and that that stop the adhesion of a lot of the bad bugs. That's why coconut oil is excellent for the pulling because it's got the oil properties to Mm. drag stuff out, but it's also got the lauric acids, pelmatic acids that can coat the oral mucosa Mm. and prevent infections. So so, something you'd recommend, Matt? I mean, you can just Google. Saturamyces bulati, load up your mouth with a good friendly 
yeast that actually competes with fermicutes, mm. like a Saccharomyces boulardii, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, mm. which is a proper yeast that used to be used in proper bread making. So the old bread, because oh, yeah. you know, talk about wheat being high in fluoride, it also it's used like, to be very high in Saccharomyces species and the yeasty bread. So like brewer's yeast sort of stuff? Yeah, exactly. Brewer's yeast, baker's yeast, those sort of viable yeasts are all effective at colonising the mouth. Um, and mainly avoiding sugars, um, making sure you've got a good balance of minerals. It's not just calcium. We need calcium mm. and magnesium, but mm. they need the vitamin Ds and the collagens and all that sort of stuff to be able to make a matrix. Oral health requires good oxygenation from your bloodstream. So making sure that you've got good circulation, which is avoiding smoking, um, and making sure that you've got good levels of coenzyme Q10, anemia. Smoking um, is a double whammy, isn't it? Because not only does it uh, deprive you know oxygen to the teeth, but also depletes vitamin C. Yeah, mm. and a triple whammy because it also degrades the microcapillaries that are trying to deliver the stuff there. Yeah, right. mm. So it all actually rots, and then your gums start receding, and then next thing you know, you've got blood vessels, nerves, and unprotected um, bone minerals exposed to acids and microbes and sugars. And that's it just gets so out of control once your gums lose their integrity. Yeah. For those people that don't, they think, oh, I'm going to go full keto, full low carb, just keep an eye out for scurvy. Yeah. Just saying. Well, like if you're totally green, avoiding all your fruit and vegetables, yeah. you, you were predisposed to scurvy and you're going to get a weakness in the gum mm. and you're going to get your teeth are going to fall out. Mm. So but before that happens, you yeah. usually get infected hair follicles, you get a little bit of bruising. I was going to say, you man, get other little signs. That, right? Fatigue is the first sign. The yeah. first sign of scurvy is fatigue yeah. because vitamin C is essential for the production of catecholamines, which is your, your uh, neurotransmitters that make you feel awake. You know, people say vitamin C is good for stress and stops the exhaustion of stress or adrenal exhaustion it doesn't it actually fuels the nervous response to stress <laughs> if you got a vitamin c deficiency it's your nervous response to stress that flattens out and you yeah. get fatigued it doesn't do anything at all for cortisol on that anyway um how was i talking about i just started talking about something Scurvy. else oh yeah so basically Inclusive. make sure you don't have a vitamin c deficiency but importantly bioflavonoids mm. stabilize the microcapillaries which is why ascorbic acid itself yeah it'll fix the vitamin c deficiency but if you have it with foods like you're talking about fruit and vegetables that are loaded up with these sort of stuff then you get the other bioflavonoids that work with it and improve the integrity of your mucosa much faster mm. so they're the main things that i've come across a bicarb's an interesting one it but is. i think you know the cool thing about the mouth is you can very easily go get litmus paper from your local chemist or wherever find someone to get some litmus paper you can merit measure your salivary ph and if you're finding your mouth is extremely acidic, then you can even just use boring things like bicarbonate soda and a bit of water to rinse your mouth out yep. and change the pH and prevent the rotting of your teeth. That's right. So it's not a matter of not being and vegan. It's a matter of being a, a ve doing vegan properly. Mm. And But the same goes for a meat eater and that. that, that if, you're, if you're eating nothing but meat, you're going to have a mouth full of acid. I haven't done any so. oil pulling for a while. I'm going to actually have to get back into the habit of it. Yeah, it did, it takes about you do it every morning in the shower, you said. But then I've got to, uh, as far as toothpaste is concerned, I use um, Dr. Organics. Yeah. It's a brand. Oh, yeah. But yeah. There's, there's other ones out there, I'm sure. And, and look, oh. we might even have some listeners that are listening to different ones that are. My wife better. bought one called Grant's, but I can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. The fact that. Yeah, yeah, you know, Grant that. Corby. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can, my mouth does not feel clean. Like, I do it, and <laughs> it just it feels Grant like it's making mouth? dirtier and dirtier, just this Grant's paste. This and it's just so, like, so, you this put Grant's paste in your mouth? I'm saying to my wife, I don't know about you putting this Grant's paste in wife's your got mouth. This other one, which is just a straight charcoal one, like you dip your, yeah. your, yeah. your, your brush in, like yeah. similar to yeah. what you said. Yeah. So, this heats of the mouth. Yeah, xylitol based one. Well, another interesting thing when we're looking at the fibers, polydextrose is really good for preventing dental caries as well. Cool, I didn't know. Polydextrose, which is a refined, yeah. it's a refined form of dextrose that becomes a fiber. It's, mm. it's, man, it's so useful. Mm. Um, a lot of the sweeteners, I tell you, one of the so that with most of the sweeteners, sucralosis and that sort of stuff, all these things are nowhere near as bad as sucrose for the oral for the teeth, health. Yeah, but further down, they can create further problems. Yeah. So they found sucralose not as bad as sucrose and that, but they all found they're relatively bad to a mm. certain degree. And the way they found sucralose was bad. Um, aspartames and SK was actually the disruption of the microbiome in the mouth. There you go. So they're not from the acid, from oh, the sugar, yeah, but actually right. from disruption of the microbiome, they had an effect, but it still wasn't as bad as the teeth getting Sucrose. cooked by sugar. Yeah, yeah right. So, um, but there is still that group. There Choose is a still, poison, a, there still is that. a group within Pretty the much. population within the world that 
their microbiome is not necessarily affected by these sweetness. So there yeah. is still like those people, that every time we talk about this, they're going, yeah, but it very doesn't controversial. affect me. Yeah. Well, it is very controversial because a lot of these Not things, everybody is the but same. But you've got to realise that these, a lot of these people that are very offended when we talk about sweetness and that sort of stuff is because it doesn't affect them. Genuinely, it doesn't affect them. they got the data on themselves. they got a large percentage of their clients that also it doesn't affect. Um, and we confirmed it with that paper that yeah. shows that in some people their body does not change when they're Didn't exposed to these things. But it did show that their microbiome changed it and did. it did show that if you take that microbiome out of that person and put it into another person, yeah. it changed their body. Made so the fact. interesting thing is, is these studies are relatively short term. Mm. You might even find that these people that say it doesn't affect me, it might affect their microbiome and then over time it might affect them. But it may also affect your clients or your friends. So that's why every, Jeff was saying everyone's different. You know, So just because you use artificial sweeteners or, or um, different you know, modified starches and things like that and it doesn't affect you, it might be affecting your customers. Yes. Well, and I, I, I think mean, they only get offended because they've spent the whole time telling their customers fine. and their clients they don't to use it. Oh, look, to, and, that it's cool. And, and use we it. Constantly re, <laughs> we so constantly re evaluating mm. information. New studies are coming through. A lot of them are proving mm. hypothesis. A lot of them are sh shooting for the light. If you just want to stick your head in the sand and say, no, I've made a point, so therefore I can't mm. retract that because mm. I'm... Like our dental associations. Well, yeah. the, and, and this is the problem, right? Then you become an idiot but the the thing is is that Tim uh, Tim Ferriss the book that I read The 4 Hour yeah. Body which is interesting and I forget exactly what it said Steve you've got a better memory than I do but he actually sp said that a lot of the people that um, he was working with to help lose body weight definitely found a handbrake when they incorporated too much artificial sweetness into their diet. Yeah, yeah. true. So, and, yeah. and I think he was specifically talking... I can't remember which one he was specifically yeah. talking about, but I mean, oh, and there's sucral, a whole... Sucral, I more so for people yeah, that I are... I think he was talking about yeah. sucralize, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. People that are more predisposed to insulin resistance issues and that definitely seem to have more of a problem. Mm. But that it. does not yeah. mean that everyone's going to react the same no. way. We've yeah. all got Hell different no. microbiomes mm. as much as we've got different fingerprints. Yeah, yeah. And that has a massive impact on the way we utilise yeah. stuff. So, anyway... Okay. No, that's cool. So for our, for our teeth, don't eat too much sugar. Oh, don't eat too yeah. much acid. You now, when I say the acid, things like there's a big trend of apple cider vinegars. People get up in the morning and they'll have yeah. some apple cider vinegar or a lemon juice with water and skip breakfast. Mm -hmm. That'll rot your teeth. Yep. So just when those acid things, you do them with your meals. Um, but yeah, look at maybe measuring a pH of your mouth if you are predisposed to demineralization and trying to maintain that pH. The pH should be yeah. above six. Yeah, mm. yeah, and that's what they found in the vegans. The mm. average vegan mouth was four to six, mm. which is too acidic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's so they get, then they can go buy alkaline water. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry. What would that do in the mouth? I mean, alcohol water. Yeah. In the mouth. But yeah. if you're just you rinsing with it, it yeah. Not, yeah it's you shouldn't people think it. they're going to be drinking it. So oh, don't swallow alcohol and water. It goes mm. in your stomach. Yeah. Which is, needs to be a pit of acid. Yeah, which needs to be a pit of acid. Yeah. People don't drink that stuff, do they? Yeah. Yeah, of course they do. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, what they should be doing just rinse them the mouth with alkaline water. alkaline water and then drink the acid water straight into the stomach. <laughs> the normal because normal water's got a pH of about six and a half because it's yeah. slightly got a, just some dissolved carbon dioxide. Yeah, in. yeah. Uh -huh. depends on their level, depends on where they are and all that sort of stuff, and depends mm. on the temperature of the water too. Yeah, that's what the whole greenhouse effect thing's all about. By the way, if you want. So when they make just you know with the alkaline water, they're not just adding bicarb either. They're actually running a process where they're removing oh. hydrogen out of one uh, they they uh, uh, one that I got it they're just adding bicarb is it oh, okay. I wasn't bicarb. sure if it was I done through so. an electrolysis process where we accumulate hydrogens on one end and uh, hydroxide oh, no, molecules on the other and what water is H2O and about mm. 1 in 7 million molecules of water disassociates to H+ yeah. and OH minus, yeah. right? So they balance each other. So out. they can use a process of electrolysis to get the H plus on one side, the OH on another not, side, and not, dominate the water either no, way. No, not really, because you can't have a negatively charged atom or a positively charged atom in nature on its own. They yeah. just attract to each other. You can't separate. You can't just. You can put because there are there are like alkaline waters made through electrolysis. We should do it. Look into that more, and not probably sure. talk about it now until we're experts on All right. it. Okay, ladies. Gentlemen, yes. whatever you want to identify with, we've got to do some FAQs. A child. FAQs. I choose yeah. to I know, identify right? as a child. Me too. I'm going back to the awesome stuff. Man, I'm serious. I got another. <laughs> I got my mate, um, Auntie Ray, um, I call him. He, um, I said, now he's the only person that really appreciates my Lego cars. So when I'm sitting around making Lego, I take photos of him, send it to him, and he'll like genuinely say, man, that's a, that's a really cool car, man. Because I show my wife, and she's like, you serious? Like, I mean, why? Like, Shouldn't you be doing mum. the lawn? Because I'm like, check, check what I just. <laughs> she's like, 
treats me like an idiot. So I have to take photos and send it to my mates because I make really good Lego, Jeff. Yep. Thank you, guys. No, no, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. And thank we'll you. be back next week. Yes. Thank you. Uru. <laughs> okay. okay that's a lot of cut that's a lot of that's a lot of red tape <laughs> uh, cut that cut the f- out of that. yeah Did you destroy this tape yeah burn it <laughs>